as you well know, photography has the power to bring to us in a very real and visceral way the awfulness that is going on in the world on a day to day basis. And the last two years have been no exception. Now, I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of, of this unrelenting barrage. So I just want for a moment to try and draw the curtains on the world outside and, and take a break from all of this. And we do this by turning to the other great ability that photography has, which is to create fantastical worlds, to create ideas and places where we can just simply go without having to worry about the, the, the day-to-dayness of our existence. How's it? How's it? David LaChapelle is the one that we really want to turn to here. He is a fantastic pop art photographer whose worlds exist really just to create beauty, to create escapism and, and a little bit of fun as well. What better antidote to what's been going on at the moment than all of his fantastical photography? The first introduction that I ever had to the world of David LaChapelle was this photograph of Alexander McQueen, who was standing in front of a castle that was on fire, you know, with some sort of, sort of rebel yell to his, his, his expression. And I think the title about the image was something about Alexander McQueen burning down the castle of fashion. And... And I think it was in Practical Photographer or some other magazine like that that was reading on the bus on the way to school one day. And, and it struck me that how is it that a photographer was able to create this kind of thing? Because up until that point, my experience of photography really had been the sort of images that you would expect to see in a magazine like Practical Photography. And, you know, and I was vaguely aware of some photographers like Abaddon or Leibovitz or what have you, who at the time were not really doing, certainly Leibovitz wasn't doing, these elaborate setups that he's become latterly known for. So the idea that McQueen could create these sets, could create these, these almost bubblegum pop arty images was completely new to me. And it fascinated me in a way that a lot of the other contemporary photographers of the time didn't. As a teenager, David LaChapelle found himself in New York and actually working at, at Studio 54 and all of that clubbing scene that was sort of prevalent at the time. So it is no surprise that you can sort of see within his photography where, where the roots of these, these worlds that he has created have sprung from. They, you know, he is using photography as a way of just capturing sort of beauty but it's interesting when you listen to him talk about his background about his mother's own attempts at photography it shines a very different light which i think is actually quite prevalent in today's world my mom uh met my dad she came to me uh, she was in america for three days and uh met my dad working in tobacco in connecticut picking tobacco my dad was putting himself through college and she used to do these photos, set up these elaborate tableaus um, on weekends when she had time off from work and raising us kids. She would set up these tableaus. That's me, the baby of the family. And she made these little wings out of paper. And this got more and more elaborate as, I, as we grew up. And we, she was creating this sort of, as an immigrant coming from, from war-torn Eastern Europe, uh, from camps and, and all this, you know, the horrors of war. She came to America with this idea of uh, this American dream, this aspirational idea of what it should look like. And sometimes she would take us and put us in knee socks. Everything was like every weekend. Knee socks and turtlenecks. And we, you know, we hated it, but you know, we, had, we did it because it was mom's thing. It was her aspirational idea of, of, the, of, the, of the American dream. And that's not our dog, and that's not, I don't know what country club that is, but we didn't belong to it. Um, and we didn't dress like that either, but that was picture day. I don't often talk about photographers being lucky, because I think that's slightly unfair. But with Le Chappelle's photography, he was certainly a, a person in the right place at the right time. You know, being in New York in, in the late 70s, early 80s, he was involved in the club scene, you were obviously working at Studio 54, and he was having exhibitions of his own photography, you know, dealing with his, his inner conflict about the AIDS thing with, you know, in friends' apartments. And this brought him to the attention of Andy Warhol, who was at the time 
you know, doing Interview magazine. And Warhol famously said to David LaChapelle that it doesn't matter what you do, just so long as you make the people look good. So can you imagine what a, what a hotbed of creativity that must be? If that's your only brief, just so long as the people look good, then that's fantastic. And, and the, the outpouring of photography that La Chapelle created from that moment forth, I absolutely adore. I love it. it has a, it's got a bubble gummy kind of feel to it. It's got a, uh, you know, a, a sort of a, a slightly surreal edge. It is completely escapist and it's extremely seductive. I often feel a bit conflicted about looking at David Chappelle, Le Chappelle's photography because I, in one hand, I'm extremely drawn to, the, to that world that he's created, that he says that he hopes lives somewhere or exists somewhere, just out, just out of sight. Somewhere around the bend, you can imagine these people are actually living this life. And I, I look at it and I go, oh, that would be so cool to, to just live in that slightly hedonistic world where there is no worry beyond beauty about enjoyment, about life, about, you know, having, well, fun. But then I think, you know, actually, I'm, I'm quite a boring traditionalist person. <laughs> look, at, look at what I'm wearing. You know, as I, I, I have an earring, but that's, that's, kind of, <laughs> that, that's, that's probably the, the biggest sop that I have to, <laughs> to, to you know, so hedonism, which is, oh my God, I've got an earring. Um, you know, but, so I don't think I would necessarily want to, to live in these places, um, you know, in, in the real life. But the idea, the idea is what draws us in, that it, it teases us with a world that could be real. And I think I certainly want it to be real, but ultimately we know that it isn't. It is bubblegum pop art escapism. And that, of course, is the beauty of the thing, that it's not trying to really create a huge message. It's not trying to drive home. You know, Look at this, you must live your life in this kind of way. It's not really having... A, 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 a grander message than beyond a place for Le Chappelle to create. Again, I keep coming to these words, back to these words, beauty and, and escapism, but that's what, that's what he wants to create. So I was, I was creating these images out of, out of an escape and what that created them gave me the sense of doing something, you know, I, I didn't, it wasn't about leaving a legacy. It wasn't about oh, I want to, you know, leave a mark behind. I actually just wanted to have a purpose for having been alive. I thought I was going to die too. So I th didn't think I was going to live past 24. I just had this number in my head because that's how old my boyfriend was when he died. I was 21, he was 24. So I got in my head, I'm not going to live past 24. So I want to get some beautiful pictures out in the world before that happens. So I started making these images, first in black and white, then in color. And they were all like about these you know, spiritual questions. And... Um, ideas of heaven, ideas of, of uh, immortality, ideas of, of the soul, and what does that look like? Um, cutting negatives and painting them with dyes. Uh, and then having gallery shows at my friend's apartment in New York City, uh, which is now a successful gallery. This pushed my friend um, Jeffrey, you know, and it's sort of like the, the, the sadness of that time, too. There was such sorrow in losing so many people so many people, and you couldn't even mourn them properly because you were so scared of dying yourself. You know, so my mom was creating out of this aspiration to create images of, a, of this idea of this, uh, you know, American family, her idea of, of, the, of America. I was creating at that point out of uh, a, a way to put my energy out of the fear and out of the, the pain and into something I could give to the world and have it have a purpose for to be alive. These days, I don't often ask people to share videos, but in this, this instance, I want to make an exception because as I mentioned, there are, there's so much rubbish going on and I could say stronger things, but I, but I won't. I, I'm tired of, of being full of awfulness the whole time that people are just you know wherever you turn all you are confronted with is 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 it's is, is shocking images it's things that make you sad that, that tell you that the world is awful 
and and we need to counter that. We need you need I need we all need to 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 help people remember that there is better stuff out there. That that we are all of us individually better than this. Share these images with anybody who you think would enjoy them, who they might bring a little bit of light into their lives, because this is what we need right now. We don't need to see more and more and more and more pictures of awfulness going on. We know it is going on. We understand it. But we need to counter this with some just, some light, some, some brightness. It won't make the, the horror better, but hopefully it can make it easier for us to, to, to deal with. Now, this is not to say that David LaChapelle doesn't inject some sort of social commentary into his photography. And one of the reasons, actually, why he ended up going and, and living in Hawaii on a farm, just, you know, cutting himself off from photography, is because of what he found an uncomfortable overlap between his magazine, commercial work, and then real life experiences. I'm trying to finish, I did this series, uh, House at the End of the World. This is the last story I did for magazines. Um, and it was about hurricanes and uh, the destruction of, of climate change. And this is, uh, this, this is a shot in, in, in the spring. And when it was on the newsstand three months later, Katrina happened and people were phoning Italian Vogue upset because they thought that I had like seen the images of Katrina and done a a, a fashion shoot about it, and they thought that I was exploiting a tragedy. And, and the images were shot, you know, three months prior, but they just happened to be on the newsstand. And I knew then I had to leave the world of magazines that my pictures were not coinciding with the, the needs of the magazine. The editor called me from Italy, David, why uh, the pictures? And you look at people calling the magazine, they think it's about the hurricane. And I said, it is about hurricanes. You know, I just didn't know, I didn't know Katrina was going to happen, but you know, I was leaving my mom's house in Florida and they were putting up their, the hurricane shutters and, and I couldn't do anything about it. I felt so helpless. So I was always doing what was on my mind and letting that come out in, in the images. Latterly, David LaChapelle has created more artistic photography. So he's gone back to his original roots. He's come almost full circle. So he's given up on the, the commercial side of things and become a photographer in the artistic sense exhibiting in galleries. And, and I find that a, a heartening thing to see because it is far easier to create grim, gritty, raw, real images that, that you can use to say, look, look how awful the world is and hopefully affect change that way. Then it is to create images that are simply about beauty. Now, of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. His idea of beauty may be different from yours, may be different from mine. But the thing is, he is creating beauty. He is actively seeking out ways of making a statement, but in a way that isn't full of despair. I really hope that all of us, you and me and, and everybody else who's watching this, can do something to bring a little bit of, of light and, and, and beauty back into the world in our own small ways. There isn't enough of it out there. Just want to tell you that, you know, make that quiet time, make that space um, where you're away from your friends, away from everybody, because we have all the answers inside of us when it comes to creative things. Ask yourself not what you're going to get, you know, from a career in photography or a career in art direction, or, but what, what are you going to give? And that's what I always did from when I was really young was, what can I give the world that, they, that, that, that would ease, ease, ease the pain of the world or, or bring some joy or touch people in some way or, or bring a smile to their face or some color? And, and I did that. I, I, I was always asking what I can give. I never thought about being famous or being a lifestyle. I wanted to take photos that were famous that were, people would see. I didn't want to sing in the shower, you know, but I wanted, I really wanted to give something, not, not what I was going to get. I talk to a lot of students and I always tell them, you know, what are you going to, what are you going to give the world that, that, 
in the, as far as imagery goes, as far as being an artist, you know, you can create darkness and more confusion and more things that nobody understands, or you can create something that's, you know, enlightened and, and can touch people, or you can attempt to do that, you know, and that's, and that's what I try to do, and, and make that quiet space so you can hear that voice, which is your GPS as an artist. We don't have, you know, a, a guide like being a lawyer, you know, do good in this, this class and go to this college and intern at this law, law firm. You know, artists, I would have never, could have never planned this journey that would have taken me from galleries to magazines to, to, to the island of Hawaii unless I'd followed that voice and made that quiet time that I could hear it, you know. So, so turn your stuff off, turn off your devices and, and listen and, um, and let life inspire you, whatever you're going through. Another photographer who creates equally fantastical worlds, but from a whole different perspective, is Desiree Dolan. I put up the video here. Go check her out. Thank you ever so much for being here today, and I'll see you again soon.